Seems like everybody's getting exposed now. However, Jeffree Star somehow finds a way to slip right by. This man managed to fake everything about basically everything. When is enough enough when it comes to Jeffree Star? From ancient empires going to war to expand to boxers fighting each other in the ring, from lion tamers to online influencers, from millionaires turned politicians to artists and dictators. There are hundreds of examples going as deep as history books can go that prove this. Power is the one thing we value most. We relish it. We scream for it. We pay for it. Our society has forever been obsessed with it. Politicians use it, philosophers untangle it, musicians sing songs about it. And yet this thing, this thing that we all want, this thing that we want most, is statistically the one thing furthest from our reach. Why? Power doesn't exist in a vacuum. It is a combination of all the things we want in life. Power is influence, it is money, fame, freedom. It is all these things together. Beware that the source of your power doesn't become the source of your demise. How does one gain power in the first place? Power is often acquired through a range of different sources. Markets draw their power from money and investments. Dictators and armies draw their power from force and firepower. In the online world, power is acquired through influence. The more people you persuade to follow you, the more power you have. Power and influence are here in synonymous, but there is one important distinction. Influence comes first, and then comes the power. Let's look at the humble beginnings of Jeffree Star. But first, I got inspired by Smoky Glow and I'm going to do this thing called Candle of the Day. And in this video, this candle is Apple Basket and it's amazing. Listen to this. I'm gonna link it down below for you guys. And I wanna take a moment to thank Cassidy for buying me a coffee. She said, love your videos, thank you. And someone, I don't know if I should say her name, bought me three coffees. So thank you so, so much. She said, you deserve so many coffees for the recent Jenna Couture video. Please make more. Thanks so much. I really, really appreciate it, guys, because I'm trying to save up for a new microphone. This guy is on its last leg and microphones are so expensive. Anyway, back to the video. Jeffrey Star first started gaining a following on MySpace where he was promoting his music career, but he actually drew attention for his appearance and for his attitude more than his music. He was a highly controversial figure. He released a collection called Lipstick Nazi using actual Nazi imagery and therefore promoting neo Nazi. Um, he joked about splashing battery acid on a black woman. He was in and out of a friendship with a convicted actor. And if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering how did someone so vile manage to gather a following of over 18 million subscribers on YouTube? These things are not fresh tea. They have been public all along. People have known about him all along. In fact, there is a chance that he may have gotten popular thanks to these things. In order to answer this question, I'm gonna play a clip from Pierre So He's got a very interesting theory and I think he pretty much nailed it. Here's an era that I coined myself and I'm calling it the MySpace trash era. Anybody that was associated with this website were basically the first people in terms of reaching internet fame. The first internet rock stars were people that were popular on MySpace and Jeffree Star was one of them. And the reason why I call it the MySpace trash era is because that's how everyone behaved back then. The context of this time period was basically be as trashy as you possibly can. The whole Paris Hilton thing arose out of this time period and she kind of set the template in terms of internet fame. Basically be overtly shallow, superficial, be shocking, be trashy, be ridiculous, and incite some sort of rage in people. Jeffree Star was a part of this. Jeffree basically implemented the same template. He was shocking, he was controversial, he was offensive, and it was all under the guise of shock rock. And then fast forward 10 years, we live in a completely different world. 
I'm sure a lot of people that grew up around this time thought the edginess would just continue for the next 10 years. In fact, the complete opposite happened. I say this a lot, but when the pendulum swings one way, it swings the other way. When the source of your power is a cultural trend, but the culture changes over time and you don't change with it, you are doomed to fade into irrelevance. But I know what you're gonna say, Cam, these things happened over 10 years ago, just get over it. And that's a very good point. We should look at Jeffree Star in his recent past rather than 10 years ago. So let's see what happened from 2017 and let's see if he actually has changed. This timeline on the screen has been created by D'Angelo Wallace. He tracked all the things that Jeffree Star has faked since 2017 and he has discussed them at length in his video on his channel. I'm gonna link it down below. I'm gonna assume that you're gonna watch D'Angelo's video so that I don't repeat the information that he is giving in his video. But guys, there is a fake mother in Jeffrey's life. That is probably the most shocking part for me, at least. So I think it's safe to say that we shouldn't assume that Jeffrey has actually changed. He is almost too big to fully and completely fail. Jeffrey Star's first mistake was underestimating the masses. Sure, he may have won in the short term, but it was only gonna be a matter of time until his problematic past would catch up with him. Jeffrey's repeated mistake was underestimating where the source of his actual power came from, which was from his followers, from the people that supported him, from the masses, the weak, if you will, because that's who gave him power in the first place. His arrogance and the belief that he is too big to fail are the reason why he is actually failing. Unlike traditional brands, influencer brands are heavily reliant on the image of said influencer and his image is no longer favorable. Involving himself in YouTube drama many, many times over the years meant that he put himself under a microscope as well as the people that he was involved in drama with. There could have been a chance that the conspiracy against James Charles would have worked, but if he had thought ahead, Jeffree Star would have realized that his problematic past wouldn't look good under a microscope nowadays. I would like to personally apologize to James Charles. And I am really sorry, James. I'm sorry, James. Having people's critical eye on the people that he was always associating himself with meant that people would look at him too with a critical eye. And this is why he is where he is now. Jeffrey has now upset enough people who have dug deep and his past mistakes are now uncovered. From lying about who his mother was to conspiring to destroy a teenager's career out of envy, from numerous racist clips that have now resurfaced, to lying about never having drank alcohol, the evidence against Jeffree Star keeps piling up. His friendship with Shane Dawson is now a red flag because of the accusations against Shane Dawson. The blackmail that Jeffree Star kept people under with his never released receipts is now a source of mockery. There is strength in numbers. If the masses were able to overthrow the monarchy in the French Revolution once they realized they had such power, they can and will do the same for Jeffree Star. In fact, this would be a breeze. Jeffree Star's ending has already begun, and just like Kat Von D, with whom Jeffree was actually really good friends until a few years ago, but that ended in drama, pretty much like any other friend that Jeffree has been involved with. Kat Von D had a makeup brand that was held in high regard only a few years ago, and yet nobody talks about her anymore. And just like her, also Jeffree Star will fade into irrelevance. Adapt or die. It is only a matter of time until the consequences of this backlash materialize for Jeffree Star. Perhaps his makeup line will survive, however, I speculate that it can only survive with some serious changes. In January 2020, due to a streak of controversies Kat Von D was in, she had to leave her own company in order to ensure its survival. It is now called Kindness, Vegan Beauty and Discovery. <laughs> which is obviously a pathetic attempt at keeping the brand alive. Not sure that can 
actually happen. Anyway, Kat Von D was just too controversial and basically had to sell the entire company because nobody was buying makeup from her anymore. And this could potentially be the future of Jeffree Star Cosmetics too. But as sad as this ending that I foresee might be, it might actually be a little too optimistic for Jeffree Star Cosmetics because this brand actually has a lot of problems. His controversy palettes were sent contaminated with hair and many of them had shades that were actually broken inside the palette. His bloodlust palette was criticized for lacking pigment, being underwhelming in terms of color story and for ripping off Lorax the Royal Full Face Collection. His cremated palette was so despicably launched during a worldwide plague when so many people have lost loved ones that it didn't look very well for Jeffree Star. So as you can see, Jeffree Star Cosmetics is not a brand that is respected for their quality. If it was, maybe he could sell the company and the company could continue to survive with someone else at the helm. But as it stands, it's not original makeup, the quality is very bad and it is led by a disgraced influencer so where do we go from here? Bye! All right, that's it from me. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!